and welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, we're going to be reviewing the ATA Turka. Now, before we start the review off, if you want to support the channel, you can head on over to cdnprecision.com. We carry carbon fiber tripods and long range rifle scopes. So ATA is a Turkish company. And for those of you who don't know, Turkey is one of the countries that makes the most amount of firearms in the world. I think they're basically second place to the USA. So let's start this off with the price point. In Canada, we're looking around late 800s and uh, on sale, actually picked this one up around $600. And the US are about 500 to late 500s. So you can get it chambered in 308, 243, or 6.5 Creedmoor, which is actually what this one's chambered in. The main ticket features about this is it's got a, well, iron sights, Picatinny rail, which is really neat. You can throw a scope on it if you need to. And I love having iron sights on a gun, just especially as a backup. So we have detachable magazines. It actually comes with one, I think it was a three rounder, and this one's I think a five rounder. It's got a 60 degree bolt throw, which is actually buttery smooth. It's got an adjustable trigger, which is a two stage trigger, and it comes in a um, Turkish walnut stock right from the factory. So at this price point, which kind of competes with the uh, Savage 110s, um, this is actually very, very competitive. So in terms of barrel options, this one I believe is an 18 inch barrel. They go as far as a 24 inch barrel. Now the Turkas, you can even get one for long range. So I'm assuming that's specifically what they're asking for. And I think based on what the dealer orders, I think they can make them to that configuration. The most important part is accuracy. How accurate is this gun? Now there was one thing holding this gun back the entire time that I only realized after I finished my accuracy testing, which I know, I should know better. The action actually wasn't seated properly in the stock. In the past, I could actually grab this barreled action and kind of wobble it up and down. That is, I'm gonna blame this on ATA um, because they kind of messed up the threads on the receiver, which I had to uh, rechase and kind of fix them in order for my bolt to get back in there. But what, what's really surprising is that it was really accurate regardless of that, because I only figured it out after I did the accuracy. So uh, in terms of accuracy, our eight shot, shot average was 1.26, which I mean, for a hunting gun, 1.26 is gonna get your deer at 100 yards, 200 yards. Beyond that, you know, you're gonna want a little better. But for an average, that's, that's okay. And the best actually was 0 0.63 inches. So that's pretty damn incredible. It actually gives me a lot of hope for their precision target model, which at some point I'd like to get my hands on. So the Barnes 120 grain TTS XBT, 2.38 inches. Uh, that was our worst. Hornady 147 grain ELDM, which I mean, still gonna get your deer, 1.52. Hornady 140 grain ELDM, 1.33. Federal Premium Burger, 135 grain, 1.33 again. The Federal Premium Gold Metal Burger, 140 grain, 1.11. So right there, you know, that's obviously, I'd say pretty decent. Um, at a price point comparable to a Savage 110, you know, we're, we're not doing so bad so far. Barnes Vortex LR, 127 grain LR XBT. For one thing, Barnes, when they name their, their ammunition, I'm wondering like, what is going on? Like, why do they need such a long spiel? Anyway. 0.94 MOA, so we're looking good, we're looking good. Nosler match grade 140 grain, hollow point boat tail, 0.89 MOA, and that's, that's decent. That's that's really good for a hunting gun, I'm happy. Next, the Horny 120 grain ELD. Uh, well, this one, so I the camera wasn't running when I did it, so I mean, we could say it doesn't count or it does, but I think our first three shots were like that super, super tight group, and that fourth shot turned it into a 0 0.73. If I were to guesstimate how tight that three shot group was, I'm gonna guess that's probably like a 0 0.4 inch group, which is freaking amazing. You know, for a gun that's like, you know, like late $500, that's that's decent, really, really good. I did the Hornady 120 grain a second time just to really see how good it would be, and a four shot group was 0 0.63, so we outdid ourselves from the previous group, and we got 0 0.63 inch group for a four shot group. Now that is incredible. For this price point, like, I mean, even, even a little higher, I'd say this would compete with the, you know, the, the rifles that are even more expensive. I think this one did even better than the uh, Springfield Waypoint 2020 that we had, which 
I mean, in terms of the barrel to action on the trigger, that was all nice, but the, the accuracy out of that gun was like a little, a little bit disappointing. But this one, even hamstringed by the fact that the action wasn't properly seated in its stock, this is, I think, um, going to be my top recommendation in terms of accuracy for this price point. So they, they did an excellent, excellent job on their barrels. And typically, Turkish companies are really more well-known for their shotguns, but they really brought it to the table. They, they really did great for accuracy. So I'm really, really hoping that maybe we're going to see some more uh, ATA arms, uh, special, specifically their bolt-action rifles in Canada. Because I bought this one, I think I bought it in April, and I haven't seen any more ATA arm rifles, bolt-action rifles, in Canada since. I'm wondering, like, what happens if I had a fully defective rifle? Like, sure, they have a warranty, but... Who's going to do the full-on replacement if necessary? Am I going to wait eight months for the next rifle, for the next rifle shipment coming in? Or maybe Canadian distributors decided no more ATA. So that, that's, a, that's actually more of a discussion for our warranty part. But anyway, it had me kind of like concerned. But anyway, so accuracy part, like they, they hit it out of the park. Next, let's talk about, uh, actually, let's, let's talk about the, the barrel still. You know, they have iron sights on this gun, which I love the fact that they did that, but the way they did it, I feel it could have been done better. Like if they'd done a peep sight on the rear, um, right on the scope base here on the, the Picatinny rings, that in my opinion is a better way. It's going to give you a better, uh, more accurate way of doing it. Like the typical V and a block on the front is going to work. And the front sight post is adjustable in terms of up and down. There's a little uh, Allen key screw there. If you turn it, it'll bring it up and down. And Yes, the front sight post is metal. It's got this little um, fiber optic looking type thing in the front. It does wobble a little, but it's not really the end of the world. My biggest complaint though for this is how big and chunky she is. Like there, there isn't gonna be any like super fine shooting with this. This would be, I guess, more, you know, up close and personal kind of shoot, shooting. I wouldn't be very happy trying to shoot this thing out to 200 yards on a deer in the, in the vitals just because it's so big and chunky. I would have preferred something more pointed towards the front. Anyway, I'm usually typically picky. Also, at this price point, the fact that we have all of this, I'm being a little bit picky. Next, let's talk about the action. So what kind of surprised me right at the beginning is just how smooth this bolt is. It almost reminded me of my Tika, which almost. It is absolutely not quite as good as a Tika, but it is buttery smooth. We got a three lug bolt design here, um, I guess like a Tika. Uh, but it looks a bit more like the Ruger bolt here. We have a Seiko style extractor with a single plunger. And so far this action has been 100% reliable in terms of feeding, in terms of extraction, in terms of ejection. Like this thing runs at 100% reliability so far. The only thing I did notice is upon closing the bolt, like other bolt actions, like if you just close the bolt like this, you'll, you should be able to just push it closed. Whereas this one, like it hits the... Um, uh, the, the spring in the back and you have to push it a little bit further in order to close it so I don't know it's not really a big deal but it's just something to think about is it needs a bit more forward pressure than some such as a Tika such as a Remington in order to close so yeah I really do love that 60 degree bolt throw really really nice also it has a safety it's got a three position safety so one you cannot fire but you can action the bolts and the second setting, which is kind of between the first and the second, but not quite in the middle, will allow you to action the bolt, uh, but not pull the trigger. And the last setting, obviously, when you push it fully forward, will allow you to pull the trigger and cycle the bolt. There's a few things I think they could have done better on this rifle in terms of execution, but overall, it's still a pretty damn good rifle. Next, let's talk about the trigger. So they have a two-stage trigger in this rifle. Based on the website, it says it's adjustable between 1.76 pounds and 3.52 pounds. Um, that is not quite true, but it's not a bad adjustment that's in here. So we actually have 2.2 pounds, sorry, 2.25 pounds at the lowest and 4.25 pounds at the highest. And in terms of breakage variation, in terms of breaking weight variation, we have a 0.15 pounds variation. So I'd say very consistent. They did a good job on the trigger for that. But in terms of creepiness, this is one of the creepier triggers. Creepier than a Savage 110. Um, I would say even creepier than some of the Savage Axes. And I'd say probably a little creepier than a Mossberg. Mm. You know, you got to take some and, and lose some. It's got some things that the others don't. But in my opinion, the, the trigger 
it's, it's got some good and bad. For hunting, I guess it's not really the end of the world. It's, you're still gonna be able to be pretty accurate with it. Next, let's talk about the stock. So this is a Turkish walnut stock. Keep in mind the ones, the variants that you're gonna see in the US are laminate, I can't really comment on those, but the Turkish walnut ones, they look really nice. Like they did a good job designing these, they're comfortable. So they do say these stocks are free floated and I can confirm that is the case. Uh, it is a little bit closer on one side, but overall it still is free floated. The trigger guard and the magazine catch, that's all um, polymer. And the, uh, one thing one thing I should mention about the magazine is it clips really nicely into pit place, like reminiscent of a Tika magazine. So it like pops right out quite nicely. So I think they did an excellent job designing that. It does come with two sling swivel sets on the front, on the back, and in the box that it does come with, so it does come with an additional about a quarter, maybe a half inch spacer right there if you need to add a little bit of length of pull. For myself, um, I found this one actually quite comfortable and I got some pretty darn long arms. And lastly is the warranty. So according to the brochure, your rifle has a warranty. Please contact your distributor to learn details and legal procedure for your country. Also on the product page itself, it says it has a five year warranty. According to the forums, it says it has a two. Um, yeah, either way I'd say is pretty good. But the only problem with this is that, I mean, in Canada, I haven't seen any in stock in any of the retailers for like, we're October, we're late October for like the last six months. So if let's say your rifle is completely defective or something and you need a replacement one, what's gonna happen? Are you gonna wait six months for your, your hunting rifle? Now in the USA, there is a lot more inventory in stock. Most of the gun stores seem to carry them. I think for a good reason, I think they're a pretty decent rifle, like an overall good barreled action in this. Triggers leave a little bit to desired for, but overall a pretty decent gun. If you have the chance to pick one of these up for hunting, I think they're an excellent buy. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, consider supporting our channel by heading over to cdnprecision.com. If you are uh, getting ready for hunting and you're looking for carbon fiber tripods that are ultra light, we have some Sunway Photo Carbon tripods, which are excellent. So, and they're actually a really good price. So anyway, thanks for watching, Epic Arms.